appreciate all the public comment. Clearly, a significant amount of money. We want to spend it as wisely as possible and reduce the most greenhouse gas emissions that we possibly can and to benefit as broad a part of the state as possible. So, uh, Senator Nielsen, and if there are no other comments, we do have a motion by Senator Wolf. We'll have Senator Beal after Senator Nielsen, and then we'll call our roll. My remarks will be brief. Uh, I'm not a big fan of cap and trade, ladies and gentlemen, but I will argue that whatever we are doing, it's important that each project have deliverables and measurables so we can really know. It can't be just a, a dream and a guess that we need to track and identify where we're successful and where we are not. Thank you, Senator Nielsen. Senator Bell. Uh, yes, I, I was uh, real excited when uh, we started this process with the uh, cap and trade program because um, I believe this was the year uh, with um, the levy going to um, transportation related um, uh, fuels that we were going to start, we were going to start to see a major increase in the allocation in the cap and trade program for transit, transit capital. But I, but I'm uh, a little, I'd say, uh, underwhelmed with the amount here. Uh, it actually um, percentage wise slips below what we had last year. In terms of percentage, we had a 10 percent and now we're below 10 percent. And um, I think we need to discuss that more. I think the, I would like to see an increase or uh, uh, the need for transit capital improvement programs is 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 uh, astounding. And it is what we do to get people um, that are trying to find a way to get to their jobs uh, without going through congestion. And I, I believe we I believe uh, this is um, the intent of the cap and trade program relative to transportation is to get people out of their cars into into transit and active <coughs> transportation and the other um, kinds of transportation that we have. And there's such a great need in our state for that. So I'm uh, I just want to express my concern about that. Um, we're going to have ongoing continued discussions about that, but um, um, I'm just going to say um, I want to pass this out of the committee so we can get moving on it, but I, I think uh, I'm going to peruse this very closely uh, when um, it finally gets to the floor. Um, we have to have more money in this for transportation. Thank you. Thank you, Senator <laughs> Bell. Senator Pancock. Yeah, just briefly, I'm certainly going to vote for this too, and I think it's amazing that we have really so much enthusiasm from everyone for all the proposals <laughs> and look forward to working out the details. I am interested in transit passes, if they can be targeted to low-income individuals, affordable housing, um, disproportionately affected communities. I, I want to say that I do have problems with the Cal and Viro screen which seems to leave out some significant poverty pockets within communities. And I like the fact that the $140 million for energy efficiency upgrades was broadened to include low-income individuals. And I would hope we could put language like that in as things move forward. I just had a quick question. The money for waste diversion at Cal Recycle, what are we meaning by waste diversion? <laughs> Biosolids, vegetable waste. Yeah, this is uh, this is Matt Alming, Department of Finance. This is just a focus on uh, organic material uh, in general. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you, Senator Hancock, and thank you for mentioning the uh, Cal Enviro screen. I think it is still a work in progress, and there right. have been improvements made to it already because I've got some very low-income communities in San Francisco that were completely overlooked, and I know you have in the East I Bay as well. I think there were some modifications of that, Dennis, yes. because of the uh, acknowledgement that if that there's pockets everywhere, yeah. and that some people live in areas that may not have a lot of air pollution, so that threw them out, because if you live, oh, let's say in San Francisco, you have that wind that blows everything into the Central Valley, so you've excluded yourself. So uh, I think there were some modifications. In San Diego, there were several areas around the state. I think 
but I could double check on we'll that. We get our shore, onshore <laughs> breezes as well, but thank you for the sentiment. <laughs> <laughs> Senator Allen. Um, I want to just mention two quick things. First of all, I'm very supportive of the, uh, the, the Senate's inclusion of UC and Cal State renewable energy and efficiency projects. I think that they really have the potential to be marquee projects that could help lead the way for the rest of the state. Uh, and for, indeed the rest of the, the nation. Um, so then there's a lot of interest there. So I, I really would want to make sure that that gets included in the final project. The other thing is I just wanted to strenuously agree with Senator Bell and his comments on transit. And I think when you look at the combination of positive impact that can come from, from uh, transit investment, from job creation to quality of life, greenhouse gas emission reduction, uh, addressing the housing crisis that we have in our big cities, um, and sustainable growth, I, I just, I, I think he's spot on, and I, I, I would really like to see us up the, the transit portion of this uh, expenditure plan. Thank you, Senator Allen. I think one of our big successes among the many last year when we established the 60% was creating a new and dedicated revenue source for transit in California for the first time, and so I don't know that we can ever invest enough in it, so I would align my comments with both yours and Senator Bell's. So with no other comments, we do have a motion by Senator, Pavel, uh, by Senator Wolf, which will <coughs> approve the Senate plan, which in effect will take this conversation for further consideration at the conference committee. Call the roll, please. Leno? Aye. Leno, aye. Nielsen? No. Nielsen, no. Ellen? Aye. Ellen, aye. Anderson? Aye. Bell? Aye. Bill I. Block. Aye. Block I. Hancock. Aye. Hancock I. Mitchell. Monning. Morlock. Morlock no. Wynn. No. Wynn no. Pan. Aye. Pan I. Pavley. Aye. Pavley I. Roth. Aye. Roth I. Stone. Stone no. Wolk. Aye. Wolk I. Anderson no. Anderson no. That's nine five. Nine five. The measure passes. Colleagues, we're moving on to subcommittee number four, state administration and general government. First issue is number 11, page 14. Well, everyone's favorite subject, Breeze. <laughs> Yes, um, Breeze is a information technology system that we're currently implementing um, at the Department of Consumer Affairs. Um, we had two proposals, uh, one in January budget um, that's providing the bulk of um, additional resources needed to really stabilize that project and set it on a um, path to completion and to be implemented. And then also um, we did um, have an, a letter, an April, uh, April or May letter um, related to um, providing an augmentation to the those resources that were requested um, due to some in increased costs um, with the contract. Uh, these resources are necessary to implement um, the project um, uh, successfully, and um, we do think we've spent a lot of time on this project um, to really write the direction of it. Um, it, it was a project that um, was started um, prior to our new um, information technology uh, uh, design uh, stage gate process that we now have that we're now implementing with any new projects. Um, and so this one uh, really could have benefited from a lot more due diligence up front in the design phase. And so uh, we really are trying to avoid uh, problems like uh, that were faced with this um, project um, in the future going forward with new projects. Um, but these monies are necessary at this time to, to stabilize um, the project and, and move it to completion. I note in the staff recommendation that you're recommending uh, to allocate the costs only to the, the release one and two departments, uh, uh, commissions and boards, uh, which is um, all of that, that Breeze project is going to um, roll the, uh, the, uh, the new IT project out to just those boards and commissions. Um, I would note that our proposal, we actually had a discussion about this internally before we put our proposal forward, and um, really there was a lot of groundwork that was laid in the um, uh, developing the Breeze system that is an infrastructure that will benefit eventually all boards and commissions um, in, a, in a new, uh, developed project um, that we will we will put forward sometime in the future to implement uh, the wave three departments um, so we really do feel at this time that it's fine it, it is appropriate to allocate those resources to all the boards and commissions because they will benefit in the future as we move uh, towards full implementation of the project 
Thank you, Ms. Bosler. LAO. Helen Kirstein, Legislative Analyst Office. We didn't have any concerns with the May proposal, which was that small augmentation related to the delay. However, we had a couple of recommendations related to that larger proposal with the 34 positions and the roughly $23 million for the program. Uh, the two recommendations that we had specifically were that the position should be limited term, and the rationale for that is that we think that the maintenance workload will decrease over time as some of the defects and other issues with the system are addressed. And then the second recommendation recommendation was that the cost for the system be uh, allocated to release one and two boards and bureaus rather than release three, as was noted. Uh, and our rationale for that is that there isn't uh, certainty at this time when or if release three boards and bureaus will be brought on to the Breeze system. And so we don't think it's appropriate that those boards and bureaus pay for these costs, which are largely uh, maintenance costs associated with, uh, with the system. <laughs> So on that issue, you're siding more with the Senate recommendation? That's correct. Okay, thank you. And is there an argument that could be made that the needed maintenance is actually warranty work? I could ask either of you. <coughs> no, uh, Brennan Murphy, Department of Finance. And at this point in time, know that, that going forward, you're really talking about um, changes and more uh, refining in a individual projects for those boards and bureaus and changing it as it moves forward, trying to make a better product. Um, you know where we've been. And so now looking forward, we're trying to make sure that they have uh, enough ability to make the needed changes to make it as functional as it was originally supposed to be. So we're recognizing these were our errors. Yes. All right. Yeah. Senator Pan. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I just. I think perhaps one of the reasons this is now before us here is I had a lot of concerns about Breeze and the mismanagement and the fact that licensees were now bearing the cost of uh, the uh, uh, of the mistakes that were made by the department. But um, I you know, appreciate the conversation I had with the department. Uh, finally, we were able to sit down and chat. And I do want to clarify because um, what I'm, what, is that actually this proposal, uh, the, the funds and the personnel and so forth, Although it's labeled under Breeze, the reality is is that, at least tell me if I got this wrong, because um, is, is that this is really about setting up the IT infrastructure for all the boards and that we're wind, essentially we're winding down, well, let's put it this way, no, we're not winding down Breeze. I mean, I think you're sort of still using Breeze, at least for now, for the boards in which release one and two that have it. But you're now relooking at and saying, do we move forward or not? And then we need to eventually need to upgrade our IT systems, not only for the boards who have Breeze, but also particularly for the boards who haven't. And that really is what this is. This request is about. It's not just Breeze. It's actually about the IT infrastructure that's necessary for the various licensing boards. Did I, is that explanation correct or not? Uh, so I think it is uh, for the Wave One departments because uh, they have they have actually already been using the new system, and so this is about a term we call knowledge transfer. So making sure that the state staff are in place so that they can continue to service and maintain the system once the contractor who has been here to build the system and bring the system up are gone, and so part of the monies in this request are for that. And we are continuing to move forward on wave, the wave two departments and getting all of the, the different requirements um, and learning from many of the mistakes that were made in wave, wave one, really putting the infrastructure and the supports in place for those wave two departments um, to go live. Um, for various different reasons, we decided to not continue with the Wave 3 departments under this contract and to instead, after we've successfully implemented Wave 1 and Wave 2, move on and, and make a determination on how to move forward for the Wave 3 departments. There's no question that we do want to modernize the information technology systems of the Wave 3 departments. Uh, it's just a matter of when, and we really need to move uh, we need to focus on what our task is at hand right now, which is really implementing the wave one and wave two de um, but, departments successfully. So the personnel and the funding is not just for the wave one and the breeze folks, it's actually for all the boards. Yes, that, it's, it's laid the infrastructure so that we can move forward in a future date so, um, with the wave three. So therefore it makes sense not to make just the board, I mean, if this was really yes. just about breeze, then I can see the board wave one, wave two, but if this is now, this is the cost across the board, then it makes sense not to just have those two 
the subset of boards actually bear the cost. Yes, that's correct. Senator Roth. Senator Roth. <clears throat> I apologize for, uh, since it's five to four, but um, <clears throat> this is a little different than what I remember from the subcommittee hearing. And let me just sort of outline what I think I understood, and then you all can correct me if I'm wrong. And I'll try to put a question at the end, so it's not a speech, but a question. My understanding was that wave one and wave two have been rolled out to a greater or lesser extent. One fully, sort of, two, we're getting there, and that this money is necessary to, while this is a troubled system, try to make this troubled system a less troubled system and more user-friendly for the licensees in both release one and release two, part of the 37 boards and bureaus, 37 give or take boards and bureaus that are part of the uh, Department of Consumer Affairs. That as to release three, my understanding of the testimony that we took from the director was that they don't know what they're gonna do at this point with release three. That each of these boards and bureaus that are part of what would have been release three currently have IT systems in place that to a greater or lesser extent do what the director would like to be able to have done with respect to enforcement and information flow and this, that, and the other. But given the trouble, given the issues with respect to the rollout in release one and release two, uh, <clears throat> the emergency break was put on and nothing further is, is being done or is planned for release three. Is that... That's my recollection of what I did here. And of course, we've got some more that I'm gonna hear the first week of August, but. Yeah, um, so release three, I would say, uh, you know, that when we put uh, the Breeze pro project together, there was the intent to implement it to all the boards and commissions. Right. And so when that was done, the groundwork was laid, uh, a, a lot of common work that will apply to all of the boards and commissions once they come on. The decision to halt wave three had much more to do with just the direct contract that we had with the vendor and some terms and conditions in the contract that made it very difficult and unfavorable for the state financially to move forward with that contract. The decision was made to terminate the Wave 3 project at this point, but not the idea of implementing the uh, IT, a, a new IT system for the Wave 3 departments. It will very much follow on what we've done in Wave 1 and Wave 2, but under a different contract. And we have not done all of the work to put that new contract in place yet. Well, one of the issues, of course, is, and we don't want to go into it here, I know, but one of the issues, of course, is that you have various boards and bureaus. They all have different requirements. They all operate differently. They all have different needs. They all collect different information. And so how do you reconcile all of those differences into one system that, you know, the one size fits all doesn't necessarily fit all? And so uh, it was also my understanding that the cost allocation associated with this was, was on a per licensee basis. In other words, if you had 100 of these licenses, licensees in your organization, you would be allocated a cost in this, your share of cost is in proportion to the number of licensees, is that correct? Yes, that is correct. So the concern over applying the cost of this issue across release one and release two that currently have some version of this in play and then across release three is that the licensees in release three would be paying for a system that provides them absolutely no benefit. Is that correct? The concern. The, the groundwork that was laid, for example, I'm gonna take just one example of many of the different aspects of the project, but one example was a self-service uh, module so that a licensee can go to a website and actually pay their fee there and do all of the transactions that they um, need to do either on an annual or biannual or triannual basis um, on an internet website. That framework will be available for the Wave 3 departments at some point. So that framework still will, that has been put in place with the Wave 1 and Wave 2 departments will be benefiting the Wave 3 departments once a new system is implemented for those departments. 
And if I may, uh, Senator Roth, I do believe your recollection is correct. My understanding is that there isn't a plan for the release three boards and bureaus at this time, and that the department is committed to evaluating each individual board and bureau and determining the most cost-effective approach for each board and bureau. That could mean bring, bringing those boards and bureaus onto the breeze system, or it could be some alternative system potentially. Maybe they're so small that they don't need to ever join the breeze system. Uh, that's been raised as a possibility as well. Um, so it, it does doesn't seem reasonable in our in our view uh, that those folks should pay for the costs of maintaining the system at this time while it's not clear what will happen to them ultimately. Uh, and some of these costs are going to things like organiza organizational change management, other maintenance and dealing with the defects for the system or enhancements for those boards and bureaus that are on the system. But release three boards and bureaus may or may not benefit from those activities. Well, it was that's certainly my understanding. And in fact, there was some question raised and I'm sure it's going to be raised again in a few weeks or months as to whether or not the assessment was appropriate and why have a one-size-fits-all when you have some of these very small boards uh, and bureaus that may be able to function just perfectly well uh, with, with pieces of paper, if not computer systems. And so um, I, I question applying uh, the cost evenly, allocating the cost across the board both to those releases that have Breeze uh, applied and those that don't. And, and if we do that, I suggest that we buy a P.O. box to get the letters from the licensees that are going to be flowing in somewhere here in Sacramento. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator. We have Senators Bell, Morlock, and then Pam. Yeah, um, Mr. Chairman um, and, and Senator Roth, I, I, um, I was perplexed by this uh, issue, of course, as we all have been. And um, uh, I asked uh, some of... Um, uh, a group of uh, people with expertise in this in my community to look at this, okay? And um, I think we need to change the way we do the whole business to avoid these kind of problems from happening again. We have to have a complete strategic restructuring of the way we do business and the way we set up these contracts because they just repeatedly happen over and over and over again. So we have to... We have to um, redo, uh, especially the early planning and management of, of these projects, because that's where the, that's where the lack of clarity, the lack of the, the, the um, how would you say, um, they spend too much time, the, 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 they don't spend enough time doing careful planning for these projects. And then they end up spending more money when the project goes the wrong way later. Okay, so that's essentially what happens. And, and we, need, we need to do um, some more conscientious, um, careful planning for the projects. And if we don't do that, we're going to have these projects go off the deep end like this one did over and over and over again. So I, I, um, I, I think that uh, I applaud Senator Roth for, for expounding on what he expounded on there. And I think we ought to continue the um, work to improve our efficiency in these IT projects. Um, everybody's watching us and shaking their heads. Why don't they just change their strategic uh, business model for these projects? What's wrong with the state of California? And we need, we need, to, we need, to, we need to change. So I think this is a, a critical issue because um, IT can be so valuable in delivering services to the public if we had a good system. And we can, we can really um, engage the public greatly and, and do business better. It will be, be so much um, improved. So, so um, I'm going to vote for this, but I think um, we, need, we need to um, just say we need to change our, our strategic business model when we, when we um, look at this in the future. We need to do something. Something has to change. I think we all agree on that. Everybody uh, in the community says that. They all say the same thing. It's California's process is broken. We have to fix it. Thank you, Senator Bell. Senator Morlock, Thank Senator you, Pan, Chair. and then Senator Stone. That may be jumping off from where Senator Bell uh, started. Um, four, four quick questions, because this is not uncommon, So, but I'm new, and this is the first time I've had a chance to look at it. So when you go with a project that starts at 27 million and now you're up to 95 million, that's 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 cause for big concern 
First question is, who's the contractor? Accenture is the contractor. And do we have a history with them? Are they, have they done other contracts for the county or a similar, I mean, the county? They, sorry, have, they, have, uh, they have several uh, uh, large contracts uh, with the state for, for large IT projects. Okay, and are they going as badly as this one? Uh, this one, uh, this one, I think, uh, you know, it is has some unique circumstances. I think along the lines that Senator Bell was saying, there was some deficiencies in how it was originally scoped uh, that uh, really uh, were what were the cause, the root cause of uh, the cost overruns, along with some provisions in the contract itself that were not favorable to the state, okay. um, and that those were the combination of those two things. Um, caused a unique situation uh, that I have not seen repeated in, in other uh, large projects that have been that have come before uh, us uh, to date. But uh, uh, certainly something that is of concern, uh, which is why um, the administration has put forth a new IT project that is very focused on building the business case and the initial design. Uh, that is needed so that it is very clear when we go to um, put a project out to bid what the requirements are for the state of California. Okay, I've, I've gone through this drill before in a different life. That, and so I, I'm just curious, uh, two things. One, do you use an IVV, uh, another, another management company to follow this whole process? Did you, use, did you do an internal audit to determine what the problems were? We, did, we do have um, independent, uh, uh, I, I'm not remembering the term, IV and V uh, uh, verification uh, analyses. All of those things are things that um, led to the actions that the state, uh, the administration took this fall um, in really drilling down on what the, the problems were with this specific project and t taking actions to change course. In this case, the wave three was actually canceled. Um, for this project because of the uh, multiple different uh, issues that were causing an unfavorable condition for the state moving forward. Okay, so uh, Mr. Chair, it sounds like we've learned some lessons. Uh, we're hearing about how contracts should be designed, but I think we need to set a model for the rest of the state because for whatever reason, when we scope a project and then someone bids on it, they tend to bid a little too low. And they should be more responsible in realizing how much time it's going to take to write the code. And they shouldn't be coming back with change order after change order of rescheduling completion dates. And, and, and we need to help not only the state, but we need to help counties and cities because this seems like an industry that's ripe for this kind of nonsense. And, and so I agree with Senator Bell that, that something needs to be done and there should be some kind of penalty clauses because we wouldn't tolerate this with a, someone who's adding a room to our home or you know, you know like building a road or whatever else. So we've got to figure out how to get in front of this and let these code writers know that we're serious about getting a contract on time, on budget, period. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator. Senator Padden, then Senator Stone. Thank you. Um, well, first of all, I, I, do, I do need to state uh, uh, that uh, Senator Roth uh, has actually taken a leadership role in, in looking at these issues and uh, contracting and so forth. And so, I don't think we, you know, in terms of rehashing this here, but um, my my question is, is that, okay, we have a request for 34 positions, and I know there's been some back and forth about it, but what I'm hearing from the department is, is that not all 34, or not all the FTEs are devoted purely to actually um, the, um, the release one and two boards, right? There's also work that's being done on with the release three about trying to identify their particular needs so that for a few, so eventually because you are gonna potentially need to upgrade their computer systems or decide that whether they're gonna be upgraded or not and so forth. Um, in fact, doing the work that should have been done the first time around and uh, that we're talking about. So, I mean, I think we have to acknowledge that we're gonna do some work in that regard, it's, unless we're planning to say we don't wanna do any computer upgrade for those remaining boards, then, I, then, then there is something to be said about, well, I assume that there's some amount of time that take that's, that's involved. Uh, you know, I guess one of the questions would be is of the 34 FTEs, essentially 34 positions, what, what, how many of them are focused on sort of the breeze maintenance and that type of stuff and how much is focused on this other work? 
Um, and then before you answer that question, I just have to comment. You know, the, the thing I'm really frustrated about, and I, there's no way we can dial this back, unfortunately, because the vendor essentially we've got to uh, edit their own contract and other things, is that the problem is is that it's the licensees who didn't choose, who didn't go and ask for this system who are now stuck holding the bag and are going to be paying higher fees. Mm -hmm. They're paying higher fees for their licenses because of this failed system. And so, I mean, that, that's fun. I'm not sure how we get out of that box because, um, you know, the, the, because unfortunately the department took us into this box and the only way to get it out is essentially sh cut off the project where it is now and you're still stuck with the, you know, the contract's a contract, so you got, unfortunately, there wasn't a way to wind that back. And so, I mean, I, that, that's, that's the problem I'm still frustrated with. I'm not sure there's an answer, but at least let's try to be fair to those people and those boards that they're not bearing even additional costs um, uh, for, for, for failures in the system. So I, I actually think that um, if we are actually doing the due diligence that we were supposed to do the first time, then, then certainly the, um, you know, for the release three, I'm sure then you do have to do some of the work that was described. And I'm just, just trying to figure out exactly, there's a, I mean, we have 34 positions here, all right? One argument is that these are all related to Breeze and therefore they have to be, you know, they all should be just paid by release one and release two. But I'm also hearing that actually some of this, their time, and I don't know how much, is gonna be spent prepping release three boards, not so they can be on Breeze necessarily, although that could be a potential option with a different vendor, but whatever system that's in the future are a variety of systems that, that are tailored to the needs of those particular boards and identifying the, the specific needs of those boards. So can you speak to that? I don't have the specific breakdown of the position, so I would have to get back to you on that. But my understanding of this proposal is that a portion of it is absolutely to to maintain and to build uh, the backbone of the Breeze system, uh, which the backbone of the system at the Department of Consumer Affairs, which happens to be the, the Breeze project, uh, that, that will benefit those wave three departments at some point in the future. It is correct that we do not have a plan at this time to implement a new contract uh, for the wave three departments. It's something we will be working on, but we really have a very large task at hand currently, which is stabilizing wave one and implementing wave two successfully, and we're focusing on that right now. So I guess I just sum up by saying I am concerned that we just put all the costs on the, the, the uh, wave one and two boards. We're in some senses penalizing them for, for, the, for, for the past failures and I'm not interested in sort of trying to raise prices on the wave three, but if we're actually going to be investing in in an in IT infrastructure that's benefiting all the boards, then it should be equally, then it should at least be at least proportionally borne uh, across all the boards. 